Hey everyone, day two on a 365 challenge. I already love it. Um, I have a buddy that I pray with almost every day and it's great because uh, the Lord has us track and so many times together, you know, on different things and we used to get freaked out about how frequently we'd be tracking with the same thing and then it just it kind of got to the point where it's uh, it doesn't surprise us anymore. Um, and that's kind of what's been already happening day one. I see uh, people commenting and doing different readings and and stuff and, and it just tracks with uh, some stuff that's been on my heart which is just going to be cool to be able to do that all year long. But I got two little reads I'm going to do today. One is 2 Corinthians um, 11, 12 to 15, which is, um, And what I do, I will continue to do, in order to undermine the claim of those who would like to claim that in their boasted mission they work on the same terms as we do. For such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. The next one is John 13, 1 to 2. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, and he loved them to the end, during supper, when the devil had already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray Jesus, and you might say, that seems like a strange couple verses. It, you know, why would you pick those to go together? And here's my, here's my thought on it today. This is what the Lord put on my heart. Um, we, got, we got those out there that are giving um, a shell of truth filled with lies. And my thought is on it, some of them seem so, seem so genuine. And, um, and, you know, and you know what? The thing is, I was such a cynic and so negative for so much of my life. It's like I'm now on the, on the other end of the spectrum. Now I'm, now I'm just kind of naive and I kind of assume people mean well and the whole thing. So, so maybe I'm just confused about that kind of thing. But, but you see guys on YouTube and all over... And they seem like seem genuine, um, so I'm wondering if a lot of these guys are unknowingly because their hearts weren't fixed on Christ, like Judas. Okay, the other eleven were fixed on Jesus, but Judas clearly wasn't. And then it said, "For Judas, uh, Satan already put it in Judas's heart to betray Jesus." I think Judas was un, when unknowingly used by Satan. Because look at what happened afterwards. He, he had remorse and regret and, uh, and the whole bit, right? Um, so if he knowingly was used by Satan, why would he have regret or remorse? If he knowingly was submitting to the will of Satan. And then, of course, Satan had got his way. He had his way with them. And um, what am I getting at? You see it a lot of places. Of course, the most popular heresy is the, go the prosperity gospel. But here is what, what has been really on my heart for the last couple of weeks. Because I've seen this guy on YouTube. Um, he is, seems bent on telling us how to share the gospel. But his main objective is to say, don't tell people they have to turn from their sin. That's not required to be saved. It's by grace through faith. And I hit that yesterday, right? And, but he seemed to be, seems to be just hammering at home. You don't have to turn from your sin. Don't tell people that. 
But then he goes further in his, in, in his um, because he's got a video demonstrating how to approach a stranger's door and share the gospel. And, and this is what really gets me. And, and I didn't mean to ruffle feathers on day two, and maybe I won't ruffle, ruffle any feathers. I don't know. You can certainly tell me I'm a big boy. I can take it. But here's the deal. He also says to the, in his demonstration video, to the stranger, the quote-unquote stranger, because it's just a dramatization, say this prayer. And he leads him in a prayer, a sinner's prayer, right? But then... He does something that you'll never find anywhere in the gospel, in the word of God. You won't find it. He proclaims him to be saved. He has determined because you said this prayer with me and you parroted what I said, you are now saved. With no um, command to be obedient, that if you, if you don't see the fruit of obedience that you just gave it lip service, that you really haven't surrendered to Christ. None of that. Just, hey, you said this prayer, man, you're saved. That's heresy, man. That's heresy. You cannot proclaim somebody saved because they said a prayer once. I fell prey to that. For a, lot, for a few years, I thought I was saved until I really learned the truth of the gospel. Um... My life didn't change all that much. I was still doing the garbage. Hey, man, I, I'm going to say sorry tomorrow. I'm good to go, you know. So, and I have, a, I have, a, I have a, a friend of mine that does that. He, when I was a, just a little baby Christian, when I just got saved, and I was really being convicted of some of the garbage I was doing, and, and I had this remorse, you know. That's what he wants. It's a broken and repentant heart. And I had that. And I went to him because he seemed so godly, you know, and he's going around. He's committed his life to sharing the gospel. Except it's, um, it's not really the gospel because he goes, well, let's, let, let's pray. And so he prayed. And not only does he proclaim people saved after they say a prayer, but he goes, oh, did you feel that? And I've seen him do it. And people go, oh, yeah, man, I felt it. And he did it with me. And... Uh, I said, no, I didn't, I didn't feel anything. You know, no, no, I'm, no, I'm thinking <laughs> maybe I'm beyond being able to be saved, you know. But the reality is, is I've grown and matured because we're called to mature, right? Get off the milk and get on the solid food. And as I've matured, I realize that that's no gospel. He can't proclaim me to be saved because I said a prayer once. And I don't necessarily have to feel anything. Now, you're going to have your salvation moment. I agree absolutely with that. But to say because I said this prayer, all of a sudden I'm going to have some feeling. Some people do. Some people don't. You know. But um, anyway, I got a little off track there. But my point is this. Um, just like the Word says, even Satan disguised himself as an angel of light. And potentially some of these people are unknowingly being used by Satan. He has put things in their heart because maybe their heart wasn't fixed on Christ. It was fixed on selfish gain or pride or whatever. I don't know. But that's all I got. That's it for today. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing more of the videos. And it's really been a blessing already. Thanks. We'll see ya.